Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. I'm gonna on purpose not look into the camera because I'm super nervous guys. No, um, it's kind of rare that I'm actually coming in with a video not wearing the headset. But, this is not really a headset video, so we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about Damon Harrison and Eli Apple, my opinion on it. You guys can feel free to disagree or agree, or let me know down in the comments section below. As always, um, I was getting this all over Twitter, all over the YouTube comment section. I appreciate that you guys want to know what I'm thinking about, and you guys know I'm a Giants fan. This hits pretty close to home, and um, I mean, where do I even begin? We're going we're gonna to start off with Eli Apple, and hopefully we'll segue quickly into Damon Harrison and then talking about uh, kind of the future for the Giants, in my opinion. So, Eli Apple, I did do a draft reaction to him, and to say the least, and this is the video that I'm, I'm pretty embarrassed of, but the reason I'm embarrassed of it is because I dropped the F-bomb like 150 times. And I'm okay with saying curse words in videos, but... I was just so over the top, and I know, what are you, pussy? No, it's like, uh, it's just, it comes off ignorant, right? And, like, unprofessional, and it's not really what I want my image to be. So I dropped the F-bomb way too often, but long story short, I was right on the money. Eli Apple uh, was terrible. He has been terrible, and he had a couple good games at the start of the season before getting injured and then playing terribly again, for his standard, I should say. They weren't fantastic games. He didn't get an interception or anything like that. But he just didn't get torched the way that I've, you know, grown accustomed to seeing him get torched over the course of his young NFL career. Now, he has only been in the league for a couple seasons. This would be his third, if I'm not mistaken, his third. He's been terrible, his first two. But you never know. Maybe he gets a new scenery down in New Orleans and he starts to play well. But I thought he was going to be bad. And unfortunately, I was correct. I wish I was wrong, dude. I wish Eli Apple was a star cornerback. I wish he came on the scene like other Ohio State cornerbacks have seen. Marshawn Lattimore took over the NFL. Denzel Ward taking the NFL by storm this year. These Ohio State cornerbacks have been very good. I still have high hopes for Gary and Conley out there in Oakland, soon to be Las Vegas. But he is still largely unproven. Eli Apple, I think, has proven that he is bad. He's just a bad cornerback. And the Giants actually got some good return for him, in my opinion. They got a fourth-round pick this year and a seventh-round pick next year. These picks are not conditional, which I thought they would be. I thought it would be a, like a conditional fifth or sixth-round pick for Eli Apple at the best. And no, just straight up fourth this year, seventh next year. And Eli Apple, to me, isn't, isn't worth even a sixth or seventh-round pick. Because even though he does have some good physical traits, I think his technique and ability to actually play the cornerback position is extremely flawed. And he really should have developed into a bigger body and really just become a, a man bump and run style cornerback. And we've seen some players have a lot of just success with that in the NFL. Eli Apple, perhaps his scheme fit, perhaps it's how the Giants played him. He just hasn't been what, like, you know, Jerry Reese and the Giants expected him to become. Again, not me. I hated Eli Apple. Uh, big win for me, obviously, as I look uh, at least somewhat competent in my uh, scouting abilities as I do watch a lot of tape. You guys are probably very familiar with my draft videos that I've done in the past and hopefully will continue to do this year, just in a different format. So I think the Giants got a tremendous, tremendous return for Eli Apple. And a fourth and seventh doesn't sound like a tremendous return. Uh, we'll get into it a little bit later why I think those picks can be valuable. But uh, I really don't think Eli Apple is even worth a 6th or a 7th. So, for the Giants to get some type of value for him, I think that's probably pretty good when he was doing nothing for your team in any other regard. Overall, for the Giants, I would say that this is a B-plus move for them. Obviously, you hate to see a first-round pick go down uh, and play as poorly as he has and really go down the drain. And for the Saints, you've had a struggling cornerback group this year. Marshawn Lattimore is not exactly having a sophomore slump. He doesn't have a whole lot of help. So he's getting a little bit more targeted and exposed to the point where last year, you could go after some other guys. This year, Ken Crawley, who had a pretty good season last year, 
not playing so well. Ken Crawley has not been as good as he was last year. You bring in Eli Apple. Where does he fit in on the team even? He's not your cornerback too. I think that's probably going to be PJ Williams and Ken Crawley mixed in. Eli Apple at best is a situational cornerback to come in and nickel and dime packages, quarter, whatever. Maybe mix in, you get some players tired at that two, three, four. I'm not really sure. We're going to have to see how the Saints play it. They needed some cornerback health. Uh, I don't really think they got him. I'm going to say New Orleans is your problem now. If you can turn him into a stud, good on you. He was never going to be anything in New York. Moving on to Damon Harrison. The Giants got a fifth round pick for Damon Harrison, right? And um, it, it pains me. It really does. Because Damon Harrison, in my opinion, and this is not just because I'm a New York Giants fan. I try to give all of my opinions when I'm not being extremely sarcastic, which I think it's pretty easy to tell when I am. Uh, with some of my lists that I do on Twitter. Uh, when I'm not being sarcastic, I am, you know, trying to remain as unbiased as possible. I think Damon Harrison was the best nose tackle in the entire NFL. Now, saying that, that's not me saying he's the best defensive tackle. I don't think he's an Aaron Donald. I don't think he's a Fletcher Cox. I don't think he's even a DeForest Buckner who's played really well or a Gerald McCoy. He is a nose tackle. He is supposed to eat up bodies on the offensive line, center, guard, that sort of thing. Just hold people and get better matchups for your other players coming in, whether that happens to be on a blitz or just straight four-man rush. Damon Harrison is supposed to eat up bodies and shed the rush, stop the run. He's been the very best in the NFL at doing that for a number of years now, four years probably. And it, it really does pain me to see Damon Harrison go away for what seems like nothing in a fifth-round pick to Detroit. Damon Harrison, if you guys have heard, is going to the Lions. We'll talk about it from the Giants' perspective first, as I am a Giants fan. It just I can talk about it more from a uh, personal standpoint, and then we'll move on to what it means for the Lions. I think the Giants may have been able to get more. Now, that's kind of weird. It's a slippery slope. I obviously don't know how it is on you know the other side of the table or behind the scenes for the Giants. I think what most likely happened is that the Giants called around saying, hey, pretty much everyone's available, or, hey, we're looking to trade Damon Harrison, premier nose tackle in the NFL. Here's how he could help your defense, whatever. Will you play ball? And I would guess that only the Lions had interest. Now, I know that it would seem weird. Why would only the Lions have interest for a, you know, a stud nose tackle in Damon Harrison? Well, that could be for a number of reasons. One, how much of that contract they'd be taking on. It's a lot of dead cap for the Giants, but how much of that contract actively would the team be able to hold? Because Damon Harrison does not have a small contract. He really doesn't. I saw someone on Twitter that say it was, it was a really team-friendly contract. Uh, maybe, but it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of salary cap hit for one player. But he, I think he is worth it. Damon Harrison is a tremendous talent. So I think that only the Lions were really interested in making a move for Damon Harrison. Uh, at, I guess, the Giants asking price. And now, there is a school of thought that, hey, maybe you wait closer to the trade deadline and you could get some more value for him. And I think you probably could be able to because what usually happens at the trade deadline, not just in the NFL, but in every sport, MLB, NBA, I'm not really sure how the NHL trade deadline stuff goes. I'm not a huge uh, knowledgeable guy into that. But in all these major sports I just named, NBA, MLB, NFL, at the trade deadline... Teams are more desperate, if you will, and they're more likely to get trades done. They're more likely to pay a higher price just to make a move happen. So if you wait closer to the deadline, closer to that, you know, uh, November, because it is only the 24th of uh, October as this went through, I think you probably could have gotten maybe a fourth, maybe a third, probably not a second. You got to look at what his value is to a team. And as a 29-year-old with a hefty contract, he's going to turn 30 in late November, a month away. So you're going to look at a 30-year-old with some years remaining on his contract. You're going to have to pay off a lot of that probably depending on if there are certain stipulations in the trade. But what do you want for a 30-year-old that's not a, a building block of your franchise? He just won't be. I mean, how often... Or how long is a nose tackle going to be able to play up to peak performance? Because you look at a guy that's Damon Harrison, 350 plus pounds, very athletic for his size. How long can you play at 350 pounds and do it as athletically and skillful and light on his feet as Damon Harrison has been? It's a difficult task. 
I would predict that Damon Harrison maybe has two to three more years of elite play or two more years of elite play and then the next three to four where he's still good but dropping off if he even stays in the NFL that long. It's hard to predict drop off and regression and things like that. But uh, he's not a building block to your franchise. I understand why the Giants wanted to get rid of him, move on, get younger, and get a draft pick for him, get some new faces in there playing. But a fifth round pick to me for Damon Harrison just is not good value. Uh, you can get some good talent in the fifth round. It's happened. It's rare, obviously. It's more rare. It's not impossible, but for a player of his caliber, and you are talking top end of his position, even at defensive tackle, not just as a nose tackle, you are talking top end caliber player, top end performing player still even this year on this bad Giants team. A fifth round pick just seems like too little to make a move and give up. Maybe a fourth, this is a slightly different conversation. I think a third round pick would have been good for his services. The Giants obviously couldn't get that. I think they jumped at, at this opportunity for whatever reason. I'm not Dave Gettleman. I'm not the Giants back office. I'm not really sure. I would not have done it personally for a fifth. Maybe for a fourth or a third, it's a different conversation as I've said, but I just, I would not be able to part ways with Damon Harrison for just a fifth round pick. Even if you do turn it into a sud, it's a very, very large gamble. It really is. But again, you're not going anywhere this year. Probably not next year or maybe even not the year after that. Try to get something you can turn into the future of your team. As I said after this, we're going to talk a bit about the Giants' future just for a minute or so. I don't really want to hold you guys for too long. We've already gone uh, a little over 10 minutes here at a, about 11 and a half minutes. But this team is clearly in a bad way. I can see the Giants trading a lot more pieces before uh, the trade deadline has passed. I could see... You know, maybe even Olivier Vernon getting moved. Janoris Jenkins, at the worst case scenario, Landon Collins, although I really hope you can offer him a contract extension and keep him in New York. He is a star player and a very skilled player in your secondary. Really the only player in your secondary that's performed worth anything this year. So, uh, I think that's pretty much going to end it for this video, guys. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Giants trade some more pieces. I'd say they're probably about done, though. I think maybe one or two more players at the absolute most. But we will have to see. The NFL is unpredictable as, you know, a lot of the season has been for a lot of teams. Uh, not the Giants. I wasn't that optimistic going into this year. But uh, I probably didn't foresee one and six. That is going to do it for me, though, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Again, let me know how you feel down in the comments section below. Damon Harrison trade, I'd give that like a C- minus for the Giants. You just didn't really get any return for him. And you're giving up, which I don't mind. I don't mind that the Giants are giving up and fully entering rebuild mode. But it does suck as a fan. It really does. But that is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I'm going to go uh, cry my eyes out. Take it easy.